I have seven or eight mulberry trees in my yard. I just want to show you what one looks like if you've never seen one before. Mulberry. Well, I traveled up to Michigan uh, last weekend and I had the pleasure of meeting Doug Moore from the Pole Barn Productions. We had arranged to meet at a woodworking show and walked around the show for a little while, took a look at what everybody else was making and then uh, Doug graciously invited me out to his shop and that was quite a nice experience. It's kind of neat to see the the shop uh, firsthand. Get a look at what's going on there. Doug's a pretty busy guy making some beautiful things. Well, from the shop, we traveled to a uh, a local source that he has for for bowl blanks and other goodies, and. Uh, I picked up a couple of mulberry wood blanks, or bowl blanks, and uh, so did Doug. Now this was a fairly heavy bowl blank, so I thought the wood was going to be wet, but uh, surprisingly not. So I'm not going to have any concerns about finishing this bowl, or applying the finish, that is. Having never turned mulberry before, I wasn't sure what to expect. Uh, what I found was uh, a grain very similar to oak, but the wood is uh, not nearly as hard. Uh, there's some good shavings coming off, but there's also quite a bit of powder, which I found pretty interesting. Kind of reminded me a little bit of Paduk in that way except the, uh, the powder is not nearly as invasive as that orange stuff from Paduke. Now here I've just formed the foot and also I'm uh, cutting the mortise for when I reverse mount this onto the four jaw chuck which I'll show you. I get a lot of questions about whether I prefer the mortise mount or the tenon mount and it's just a personal thing for me but I, I definitely prefer using a mortise uh, with the the four jaw chuck in expansion mode instead of compression mode. And here I'm still deciding what shape this bowl is going to be. I've got a little bit of sapwood on this piece and uh, I'm thinking I want to keep it just for contrast. So I don't want to cut up too steep from that foot. And my initial thought was to have the, uh, the rim of the bowl flare out like I tend to do just because I like that shape. And this is where I'm forming that flare that I talked about. And once I had that looking like I had pictured, I decided that that wasn't really going to work. I just didn't like it for some reason, so I went the opposite direction. I took the flare inboard instead of outboard.
And here I'm just taking the time to make sure the outside of the bowl has a uniform curve. I like to use denatured alcohol to raise the grain because uh, it dries fast. It just evaporates really fast and I can get right back to sanding. You can do this with water, but it just takes a long time for it to dry. So I sanded up to 220, hit it with denatured alcohol, and then went right back to 220, and then up to 1200. And you can see it shining real smooth a little bit of chatoyance there a little bit of grain flash and here I'm just adding that OB shine juice that I love so much the recipes on the screen and there's a link to Captain Eddie's video also here It's been a little while, but it's time to look at what some of you have been up to again. Sorry it takes so long. Cole Blount made these. That's gorgeous. And Jarrett made these beauties. Redemption1819 on Instagram. Good work. Mads Emil from Denmark made these. Very nice. And finally, Rashid or Ratchratch made these. Again, just gorgeous work. And something about all of these turners is they've all been turning just for a few months so hopefully for those of you that are thinking about getting into wood turning you'll find that inspirational so I've got it reverse mounted now and it's time to start working on getting this bowl hollow And you can see that I've got the tailstock up for uh, support and initial safety. And just as soon as it starts getting in my way, I'll have to remove it and I'll pivot the headstock out just for better access. And my intent with the wall of the bowl is to get it down to about 3 sixteenths. And then make it uniform from the rim all the way down to the bottom of the bowl. Now, I didn't really need the uh, the cutting power of the carbide tip here, but Mike Benjamin made me such a nice tool that I just have to use it every now and then. Thanks again, Mike.
And I'm just finishing up with the negative rake scraper to eliminate any lumps or bumps or high spots. tell you this sure is pretty wood the grain the color of the chatoyants so nice Look at that flash. So after putting three coats of OB Shine Juice on this piece, I decided to try out Axe Polish Restoring Paste. I told you I got together with Doug up in Michigan, and he just wouldn't quit giving me stuff. <laughs> He's a really generous guy. Super nice guy. I said it somewhere before, I'll say it again. I kind of wish that... Uh, he and I were neighbors. Well, I gotta say, I like this axe stuff. Gives it a nice shine and it's food safe. Well, let me take this time to give a special shout out to all my subscribers, old and new. I can't thank you enough for your support. It just means the world to me. Thank you so much for helping my channel grow. That's not the more I'm talking about. All the brown marks you see there, that's all natural. It's all internal to the wood. Beautiful mulberry. That's the more I was talking about. Semper Fi.